Take 2000, Jim Bro, don't assume my gender, ZZ Top, and the other guy, who are all friends with Mentor. Mentor is the guy who sends them on errands to dungeons because he owes money to the orcs and the orcs are gonna kill him. So these guys go down, go to the dungeons, get lost, click on doors or things that are on the walls, get there, get whatever Mentor asks them to get, Go back to Mentor. Mentor says, congratulations, I'm gonna take you to Saxby's tonight. And the other guy, who is Morker or Sargon or whatever you call him, he gets mad and there's a hero quest. God, that took a long time to do. So welcome back to another tutorial. On today's tutorial we're gonna learn how to paint the heroes for Hero Quest. So as you can see I cleaned them already and now we're gonna wash them and get them ready for the priming which is quite important that you know get them very clean. As usual I'm gonna use the white spray. So white is what we need to base them with because washes and inks are gonna need to be painted on this clear coat of nice white paint and as usual we're gonna start with the metals lead belcher paint all the swords all the armor with a nice coat of lead belcher after that we're gonna go through Gehenna's gold same thing sword hilts belts etc. Carefully pick up the details on the dwarf's armor as well and the small gems on the wizard. Now we're gonna give a nice coat of red lamp flesh shade on all the flesh, on all the miniatures. The barbarian is the one that has the most. The elf is just the hands and the face. Same with the wizard, only just the face and the dwarf as well. Using yellow, we're gonna paint the hair on the wizard and on the elf. Also, the wizard has some details in flames and I'm gonna paint those with this yellow followed by by the way this is uh, Lamenter's yellow I forgot to say that Lamenter's yellow the clearest of the washes and then we're gonna use um, what is the name of the other one? Oh my god Cassandra yellow yeah we're gonna use Cassandra yellow for those parts we move on to sepia the wash that we need for the leather strengthening the nice gold and all the miniatures and on the barbarian we're gonna use it also to shade some of the flesh parts because there are gonna be a lot of uh, work on the flesh on this miniature same for the elf flesh gets a little bit of sepia the boots, leather and such are gonna get a nice coat of sepia Moving on to Agrax to strengthen the shading on the flesh and also on the leather parts of the Barbarian. We're gonna use this wash as well for the gold. And as before we're gonna use it on the leather parts on the miniatures. Since the wizard is wearing a whitish robe, we're gonna paint that with Agrax because then we're gonna highlight it to make it look as it should. Using white, we're gonna clear all the mistakes that we did on the previous washes.
Now we're gonna use Gilliman Blue to paint the cape on the wizard. And then we're gonna move on to Drakenhof, nice shade. And we're gonna paint the hair on the Barbarian, the small ribbons, which are black on the boots. Give a shade on the metal, so we can start making it three-dimensional. And all the bases on all the miniatures I'm gonna paint with Drakenhof nice shade as well, because we're gonna paint them as flagstones later on. The dwarf has a white beard, but we need a grayish tone on the bottom, so we're gonna paint it with Drakenhof as well. And we're gonna shade the recesses on the cape of the wizard to make it a more enriching blue. Not all over the place, just the recesses. With known oil, we're going to make a, an, an extra coat on the hair of the Barbarian, those ribbons. And we're gonna do the same on the ribbons on the beard of the dwarf. We're also gonna use it to darken some of the metallic areas here and there. An extra coat of Gilliman Blue to make the, the cape of the wizard pop up. And then we move on to Weight Watchers Green. And we're gonna use this to paint the clothes on the elf. Now remember, we're using the scheme from the boxed art, not the cards. So if you look at it, Mike McVeigh painted the dwarf's clothes as well. A little bit of green here and there on the armor. Then we move on to um, Fuegan Orange and we're gonna paint the boots, the gloves, on the wizard by the way. And on the dwarf he has some details on the gloves as well. With Fuegan Orange we're gonna give a little bit more tonality to the skin of the barbarian and also the uh, trunks that he's wearing. Now we move on to blood letter. As you can see, I usually start building the colors from the light shading and then go into darker or more intense colors. In this case, the elf had been painted with Fuegan Orange and now I'm painting it with uh, blood letter. Same with the red details on the gloves of the dwarf. And I'm putting a little bit on the lip and the nose as if he had been drinking for a while. Well, you know, dwarves. We are going to do the same on the gloves of the wizard and the red details that he has on his cape and... not the cape, yeah, the cape and the tunic, sorry. The boots on the wizard are also strong, very strong red and we're gonna use blood litter to make that color happen. With a darker shade of green in this case, I think it's... Uh, oh, what is the name of this green? I forgot. I'll check. <laughs> We're gonna paint the, the, the details in green on the elf. Same with the dwarf. There's the small parts on his armor, beneath the armor. The jewels, we're gonna paint them white because probably they, are being, they have been stained with the washes. There are a lot of small jewels and details on these miniatures. Even though they look simple, they have a lot of details. The dwarf apparently has to spend more money on jewels. He's like the Mr. T of the group, basically. Using Biel Tan Green, which is the color that I forgot the name, we're gonna darken the clothing on the elf a second time. 
which is the pants and that small uh, piece on his uh, shoulders. The dwarf as well. The Akaton that he has beneath the armor. And using blood letter, we're gonna darken a second time the red parts, so the color looks strong red. We're using cardboard crimson here to paint the handle on the axe. And also the sleeves on the dwarf's tunic. It's a nice combination of colors, cardboard and the strong ring. So if you want to stop now, this is how the heroes will look. It's a good level for tabletop gaming. In after this, you can go the extra mile and make them look uh, much better. But I think this is a decent standard for gaming already. All right, using Weight Watchers Green, we're gonna paint the small corners on the jewels that are green on the miniatures. Like the elf, he wears those big green emerald gems all over the place. I forgot to paint some of the gems because the dwarf has so many freaking of them. So, I'm gonna go back and then proceed to highlight the beard. Slowly, carefully, so he looks like the white dwarf that he's supposed to be. There you go. See that is small, the small little uh, paint, the white paint is gonna make it look much better. Ushapti bone is going to be used now to highlight the clothes on the wizard, so the tunic doesn't look that dirty. This is one of the most critical steps on painting the wizard and also the barbarian because this color is gonna make it uh, it's gonna make these surfaces pop. The flesh is highlighted very carefully cheekbones, chin, nose, eyebrows and the hair is highlighted as well now at this step. The barbarian is the one that needs the most work on this step so you have to be very careful follow the muscle lines and do not overdo the highlights, just do it on the most uh, pronounced surfaces. Same step with the elf, chin, cheekbones, nose, knuckles, fingers. Be patient, be, be very patient on this step and it will pay off at the end. Okay, this is a wash with a new uh, one of my new inks. It's basically the substitute that I found for the dark wash that I used from Citadel, which is not made anymore. And I'm gonna use it on the gold in the dwarf. On the dwarf, I want to use it on the boots and the gloves because I want them darker as in the original miniature. And on the elf, I'm gonna use it as well on the golden details and his bag. And I'm going to paint the small lines on the green pants because those will be painted red later. So this is the base for that uh, red that I'm going to do later on. Here we are working on the gold. And as you can see, I'm making the small lines here and there just to make the surfaces more distinct.
working on the mouth, the eyes. The barbarian, though he might seem the easiest one to paint because of the small amount of different colors he used, is actually one of the hardest. So yeah, here we go with the gems again. Paint in green with a darker shade of green. In this case, it will be built and green. So we get that transition between white and dark. And here I'm using Drakenhof Nice Shade to get a little bit more extra shading here and there for the eyebrows on the door, on the barbarian, a little bit more on the, um, the small things that they have on the beard and such. And once again, Gilliman Blue. So as you can see, I'm going back and forth on a lot of colors, and it's basically because I didn't exactly know how to paint these miniatures. I could have optimized the steps had I known how to do everything. I'm giving a small glaze of blue on the barbarian's hair. I painted blue some of the gems on the dwarf, and I'm, I want to make the elf sword look a little bit more elvish, so that blue is going to help on that. Carefully with white, I'm going to highlight the clothes and the robes and whatnot on the wizard and I'm gonna paint a small line over the red line on the cape because that has a distinctive detail by Mike McVeigh that I want to copy. Now paint the eyes carefully as well the eyebrows a little bit of highlights just to make it look better the flesh on the Barbarian is going to be highlighted one last time. Very careful, do not overdo the white because you can go uh, too white in this case. And on the elf, I'm going to paint small white lines inside the brown lines that I painted before. Highlight the gems if you did too much wash. Lamenter's yellow again. And on this step, after we highlighted the hair, we're gonna give a glaze so it looks more natural and not so white. With the use of Fjörgen Orange, we're gonna start painting the white stripes on the pants. It's basically following the same steps as with the tunic. We should have done this before, well... There are some white highlights that I did on the gloves and such, and I'm making them... Um, don't be so strong with a glaze of Fjörgen again. Blood letter red. Paint the gems that I didn't paint green. The dwarf has all three colors green, red, blue. And paint the stripes on the pants of the elf so they are the same kind of red as the tunic. Using Gilliman blue again. I told you, I, I should have. Um, learned the steps before. So now I'm, what I'm doing is painting a few few uh, shapes here and there on the wizard's tunic because they have to look like stars, moons and such. So it's like basically doing small free hands with this carefully. And now I'm gonna use yellow to paint the small stars on the cape, white to paint more small stars and moons on the cape and I'm gonna highlight the small stars and moons on the tunic, leaving a little bit of blue around them. It should be looking like a starry night on the cape. Another one of the new inks, this is the substitute for my um, uh, chestnut ink. I paint small dots, red dots, and I also paint small grooves on the staff of the wizard so it looks like the grain of the wood. This is a very easy step. A lot of people think that it's quite complicated, but it's not. It's just paint small lines 
with very bad pulse. Seraph in sepia to darken the wood overall, so it doesn't look like there is a such a big transition between the grain and what is not grain. Now Abaddon black, and with this we're gonna paint the dots, the pupils on the eyes. Be very careful because this is one of those steps that are quite important now. The eyes are focal point, so having a little bit of patience here will pay off. I also paint small dots on the um, trunks of the barbarian because I'm gonna make it look like a leopard skin. So first we need to paint those small dots. With the use of white, again, I paint inside those dots. And then we will have the small, you know, small things that leopards have on their skin. Iron breaker to highlight the metals. I use the flat side of my brush to start highlighting uh, the blade. And then I make this small grooves or indents as to make it look a little bit sharp. There's not much to it, it's actually quite easy to do, if you are careful. Highlight the armor on the dwarf, which is kind of too dark otherwise. And also his axe in some highlights, showing the true metal of dwarven smiths. The elf sword as well has to look sharp. So highlighting, leaving the washes beneath. We're gonna highlight as well with Gehenna's gold. Just going back to the metals, just cleaning them a little bit. Leaving the dark areas and just highlighting the more raised ones. Everybody gets the same treatment. So as you can see, what I've done with these miniatures is just go back and forth with a lot of colors. We could actually optimize the, the whole painting much more, but well, Runefang Steel is the last uh, highlight on the silver metal. So just apply uh, light here and there. And thus you will achieve the results that you want to achieve, which is making the swords look sharp, the armor look shiny without overdoing it, and also having a little bit of volume here and there. I don't do that dry brush. That will be suicide at this at this moment because otherwise you, you're gonna stain all the things, all the areas around. With pure black, which I could have done before, but well, I'm gonna um, draw these small checkers on the white line on the cape. Again, we'll sharp to bone. And on this step, what I'm going to do is paint the lines for the flagstones on the bases. As you can see, it's very, very uh, simple. You just don't need to do something very detailed. Then we go with white, highlight here and there. You don't need to be very careful in here. Again, Abaddon Black paint in between the flagstones, so you make them look uh, three-dimensional. And since the highlights are a little bit too strong, well, it's time to darken them on the next step using Agrax Earthshade. And that way you will finish the bases. So as I was saying, I have used a lot of colors twice or three times. I could have done this faster if I knew exactly where I was going, if I had organized myself better. But it was a little bit painting by ear because I had to look at the pictures of Mike McVeigh miniatures and basically figure out how to do all those things. But I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. 
here we have the finished miniatures. Sorry for making you wait so long, my computer just acted up. Windows 10 rolled in, changed all the settings. I don't have internet, I have to put it on a, on a USB stick and upload it from another computer. But well, I hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for another tutorial, maybe in three or four years from now. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and this is Miguel signing out. Bye!